So IAX2, we've talked plenty about that, but basically it transmits everything on 4, 5, 6, 9. So it transmits both the, the it transmits both the control and the media on one port, 4, 5, 6, 9. So it's really easy to manage as far as your switches and routers go. Nat, uh, uh, natting doesn't come out of effect if you're not floating a port number all over the countryside. If you can take a free IAX client phone and make a telephone call, open up 459 and make a telephone call with that, and you take a SIP uh, phone like the, um, uh, oh, the Brave phone or something, you can't make a call, you have firewall issues. It has nothing to do with the switch. And that's because it uses one port, it doesn't dance around, and the, the nat, natting firmware in the router doesn't get crazy about that. It always, and once again, always goes to the server. So, um, one of the really cool things is that it has really long-term kind of jitter buffers. The SIP in the 1.4, about, 25 or 30, somewhere in there, started getting some SIP, SIP jitter buffers and automatic jitter adjustments. It's nowhere near as mature and uh, well done as the IAX. The IAX was done by the Digium crew. I don't know where the SIP stuff came from, but the jitter buffers, the automatic jitter buffer adjustments, things like that, done in IAX trunking is really, really good. And likewise, the the way they pack everything into the channel is very, very efficient over doing you know, like a SIP interconnection <coughs> to um, machines. <coughs>